Hello everyone, my name is Rajesh Kumar and I'm your DevOps SRE DevSecOps coach. So now uh, we are going to discuss about Selenium. So what is the Selenium? So guys, uh, there are two tools which I'll be teaching you as part of automation testing. So yes, uh, uh, I'm not trying to make you the test engineer, but remember that uh, you are a part of the DevOps uh, group and SRE and you are supposed to have some knowledge on the testing side as well. That means what what they do, which tool they use it, why do they use certain tools and all. So some of the knowledge you are supposed to have it and same time uh, this knowledge will help you to become a part of you know in, it will help you to you know implement the proper CIs for it continuous integration. So uh, two tools the one which I'm going to teach you one of the tools is selenium and second tool which we have is jmeter so selenium is one of the tool which we use for the performance testing and the other tool which we have is uh, jmeter which is for the sorry sorry selenium the one which we use for the uh, feature testing functionality testing and the jmeter which we have is for the performance testing okay so what i'm going to talk about it today is in this session is like why we use selenium what is selenium what are the versions and suit and how to set up and some hands on so why we use selenium simple reason is very simple we do not want to manually do the testing simple we want to automate all the testings and when i say here the testing uh, primarily i'm focusing on the website testing web based application testing and you don't want to do this testing so for that reason you automate the process okay and that is why we use selenium so now if you look at this uh, uh, sheet and if you compare this sheet with with other tools let's say selenium versus hp qtp ibm rft test complete and so on so if you see that in terms of license in terms of cost in terms of customer support in terms of environment support in terms of language supports everywhere uh, selenium is uh, leading compared to other tools except one thing is like coding skills so in order to use uh, selenium you need to you have a greater coding skills for that so that is important for all of us so anyways uh, don't get scared the moment i say coding because you just need to understand how it works not you don't, probably may not have to do the coding so what is selenium so it's a, one of the tool uh, automation tool for the functional testing uh, based on the web browser and it's open source it's a free tool uh, that is how we have used it now if you look at the selenium what are the comp components we have as part of the as part of the selenium suit so we have a selenium id and then grid then rc and web driver if you look at this how historically uh, selenium has been evolved so in a version one of selenium they had these four components id grid rc and web driver and uh, in version two rc and web driver got merged together and uh, that is we call it selenium web driver that means you need to focus on id grid and web driver and these are the three components which i'll teach you uh, third version of selenium which you have, we are using right now in fact four has come in fact so they have improved the id they have improved the grid and they have improved the selenium web driver as well so these are the evolution and versioning of the selenium now if you ask uh, uh, me what are the uh, browser is supported by selenium so it support almost all the browser i must remind you uh, selenium is used for the functionality testing and for app uh, browser based applications basically any website if you have which is a browser based and if you want to do the performance testing then you can use selenium for it so yeah how does it work so you have to write a code send it to selenium selenium will send it to driver and then driver will call the internet explorer and internet explorer the website which you are trying to test in the code you execute and it will tell you whether it's a pass and fail simple so that is how it is being used 
Now the question is, okay, so how can you write a code? Which programming languages it is supported by Selenium? So if you see that here, uh, which programming language, you know, basically almost everything is supported, all major languages, including Java, Python, Ruby, Perl, PHP, whatever it is, and it is supported. So uh, that is all about uh, Selenium. Are you good with, good with it? Any questions, any doubts? Any questions, all of you? Hello. Uh, no. Okay. So now, guys, as I said, there are three components of Selenium which we have. One component is ID, second is a web driver, and third one is a grid, which you need to know. So now the question is, what is ID? What is ID? So guys, whenever you hear ID means it's basically extension. It's a plugin. What is a plugin? I mean, it's basically browser plugin. So sometimes we put add-on, sometimes we call it a plugin, sometimes we call it a extension. Depends on what you are using. So it's ID. Yes. Now how do we use it? So basically ID will help you to record your session and when they say record a session that means let's say i'll put it in a very simple way you go to the browser and you manually test certain a website what id will help you with whatever you are doing it will record that session in a browser itself and that session the one which you you have done it as part of the manual testing you can play as many times you want it to see if it is every every time it's there or not so for example uh, record the session the moment id will generate a selenage we call it selenage and that selenage you can play multiple times i'll show you the demo in some time uh, what you have now selenage primarily you have a three different sort of commands types of commands one is called actions Second call, we call it assessors. And third one, we call it assertions. So what is actions? So action is something like what you do on the pages. For example, click. You do on the page, right? So that is action. What we is assessors? Assessors is something like what, whenever you do the click, it loads certain files or do some, some actions. So everything that is the result of actions which which will be the response code will be stored in the assessors for example when you hit any website then you get a response code and then you get html file right html file so that is your assessors okay and the third type of the commands which you see in the cell is while recording is assertion assertion is something you are trying to find out whether the certain response is good or not good, good or bad. So that is called assertion. So this is the kind of uh, code you will see that when I show you the demo. And these are the actions and these are the assertions. So in fact, in, in JMeter, there are three different uh, types of assertions. So one is called assert, another one is called verify, and third, we call it a wait for. That means one of the test cases, if it is, uh, and if you put the assertion assert, and if your test get failed, whole te other tests also get aborted, aborted. But in another case, when you use the assertion as a verify, the one test get failed, but it will continue executing the other test cases also. And the wait for when you use it, that means other test cases is going to execute only and only if the wait for condition will become a true so basically there are three types of assertions which you have so what we understood id is a nothing but a kind of extension for the browser which can record the session which uh, your browsing session 
that you can play n number of times. When you record, it generates a selenies. And selenies, you have a primarily three types of data. One is like assertions, actions, assertions, and assertions. Assertions also is a primarily three type: assert, wait for, and uh, wait for, and uh, I forgot one thing: wait for and verify. So these are the three types of assertions which we have. Are you comfortable with it, all of you? Yes. Okay, so now let me show you the demo so you'll understand better. So guys, this is my Chrome browser. Okay. And here what I'm going to do, click on this one and click on add-ons. Here where's add-ons, here it is. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, enable the Selenium IDs. So let me check if I have it or not you see here is there already see this is i have already already stored it as part of the previous demo so it's already there if it's not there you just search for it selenium ids and then you can install it now if you install it you can click here and you see here this is the id and this is your id you, this is the extension which you are trying to use it now the question is what are you going to do so of course i am going to browse my website and whatever the browsing I'm going to do, I'm going to record this. So here you have a record a new test projects, open an existing projects, create a new projects. Of course, I'm going to create a new project. A name of the projects I'm going to name it Rajesh Kumar dot X Y Z, and click OK. And done. So now this is your pain. Now don't get confused. It's very simple to understand uh, this pain. It's ID, you can call it in Selenium. So here, if you see that, uh, here you have a folder. You can open up, you can save it. There's a recording button which can get started here. Pause button, breakpoint, you can create it. There's a multiple tests here. You can have it at the test. One, two, three, four, five. It becomes suits actually. Whenever you run the test here, your locks, and whatever the recording you do, it's generator selenies where it is actually. And here you can play the button. If you want to rerun, if you want to introduce the timer between the two tests, you can do that. So something like this, you can, you have it. So now what are you going to do? So I am going to test one of my website, which is this one. Okay. So this as a, I'm going to do that. So let's do that here. And I am going to rename this test case here. Test one Rajesh Kumar dot XYZ home test, home page test, right? Home page test and rename it, right? Now what we are going to do, so I'm going to click on the record and it will prompt you which site you want to experience it. This is the one. Start recording. Now, guys, what I do on this website right now, it will be recorded. For example, scroll down. I click on the portfolio. I click on the interest. And everything got recorded. Okay. And then I go to here and stop the recording. That means whatever I did, if you notice here, it everything got recorded. See here, open, set, click here, click there, whatever it is, is got recorded. Are you able to understand that, all of you? Yes. So now I'm going to save this project because this is a simple project. I'm going to save it wherever I want it. And now, as I just said, I am going to I am going to run this. So what I'm going to do, let me close this before running. And you see the play button I'm going to do. I have only one test cases. You can have a similar way, hundreds of test cases and run this and see that whatever I did is going to do the same thing by ideas. Click on it. See, open up Rajesh Kumar 
and click here, there and all quickly and you see text successfully done. So simple, that's your ID. Okay, so now I'm going to do a little bit more than only opening up and you know, I'm going to set up assertions. So what I'm going to do, I am going to delete all these assessors and I'm going to have a new recording. So what I'm going to do, click on the recording and here I'm going to click on the experience. I'm going to click on interest and now I'm going to check if this text is okay, that this should pass. If this is not okay, this should not be passed. So if you right click, go to the ID, here assert and text. See, my mouse is dancing. Text. Done. And then finally, I'm going to stop this. So if you see that click, click, it's okay. But look at this here. So here, if this content is not found on the page, that means test should fail. Okay. If it is found, that means test is passed. So what I'm going to do, save this and then rerun this project. So run this and see here test got successfully because I did not modify anything. But right now I am going to modify this. So assert test instead of passion, I should have a passions. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I'm expecting passions, yes. But if it is not there, it should fail the test cases. Are you understanding all of you? Yes. So now I'm going to run this. Look at this. And you see, test cases failed. Here it's the rate, you see, in the logs. Why it get failed? You can read it carefully. You will understand that you have a passion here, but here in the results, you are getting passions. Here is a passions. So that is something which is failed. One test cases, I, I did it and it got failed. So this is called ID. All of you understood that ID now? Likewise, you will create a number of test cases and accordingly you will run it in the ID. So that way pass, fill, pass, fill, pass, fill, pass, fill, pass, fill and this will give you the right results. Any questions on the ID front, all of you? How about if you input the wrong values in the date fields, are those also recorded and validated? Yeah, it will be failed, right? If it is not found, it will fail. It will give you the report saying that this test case is failed. Right? Okay. Now, next thing which I'm going to teach you is, is web driver. So what is web driver? So guys, web driver basically is a executable. So now the question is why do we have executable then? So I'll tell you the problem with the ID. The problem with the ID is you cannot use same extension. Let's say you are right now I have just used Chrome extension. You cannot use the same extension on the I Edge, Firefox or Opera, different browser. That is the problem. Second thing is, see, ID is very flat way actually. If you really want to write up lots of logic in order to identify the results, test cases, then you will not be able to customize it. That means programming capability is missing in this. And that is where the, these two findings, which will be helped by ID. So, oh, sorry, web driver. What is web driver? Let me explain it to you in an easy way instead of going through the slides. In the web driver, what you are doing, you are writing, this is you, and you are writing the test case. Now, this test case you can write in any programming language. 
uh, I have already said it support Python, C++, Java, different languages as well. But you write your test cases. Now, typically in this session, I'm talking about the Java. So you write a test cases in Java. After that, this test cases, I mean, this code which you write, you're going to send to Selenium library. Selenium library. We call it Selenium client library. Now you will think about it. Okay, code I will probably write it, but where do we find the Selenium library? So you have to go to internet and search for Selenium download here. And then if you come to this place and you see here, there is a Selenium. You see Selenium client library, web driver, lang. Oh, uh, language specific this is for c sharp ruby java python javascript so you have to download this is the one which is java so i have already downloaded it let me show you so it will help you to understand that so typically everything i download it under the c drive and then and then tools and then and then selenium and here it is this is the one okay so if you download you get a zip file and then you can extract it so here what you have to do you have write you have to write a code which i'll teach you in some time and this code you will send it to the client libraries you will run through this and client libraries will call executable which is called web driver this is the web driver so now the question is where is a web driver from where do we get it so just go to the google and search for selenium web driver but it is a it is a browser specific okay so for example if you are looking for different web driver uh, so this is the this is for chrome web driver this one which i'm showing in this and here you will find the firefox ios yeah so firefox you get here i you have it here and uh, firefox just search for it you will get it firefox enter here it is this is the firefox gecko driver okay so every specific browser you have a selenium driver so now if you look at this here this drivers is executable so you can download it i have already downloaded if you go back and you see here web driver i have a two web driver chrome and firefox this is a chrome driver web driver and this is a firefox driver so now what will happen you have if this is you you write a code code you send it to the client libraries and client libraries will trigger the web driver and web driver will trigger the browser at run this test case and then give you test is passed or failed simple did you understand that how the driver works all of you all of you so now the, the most important part of this is code. How do we write a code? So guys, this code, as I said, you have to learn Java, Python, depends on what programming language. But right now I'm going to teach you on techniques and that techniques will help you to generate a code free of cost. So there's one test case here. If you see, here it is. Click on the dot, dot, dot and click on the export. You see, whatever the ID we have used it, you can convert into the code. And that's the reason I covered the ID. Because ID is not useful for the testing purpose, but it's very handy to generate a code. So here, what code you want to generate? C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, Python, Ruby, what exactly? I'm going for Java with JUnit combination and export. And here, if you go and store this file, now, this is the Java code which you got free of cost, free of cost without doing anything. 
let me show you this code here it is see this is the java code right and if you look at this very carefully very carefully see here what you are doing open up this website resize this website click here click here click here and here assert you see assert so this is java code free of cost you got it you did not do anything are you understanding now yes so now let me run this code so guys i have already some of the codes already place let me show you that here is a code okay and here is the let me delete the class file in front of you and this is your java file i want to show you what we are doing in this java file is a one test cases okay and which driver i am using if you look at this this is the gecko driver so gecko is a firefox basically okay and which website i am testing so this website which is called devops trainer.in and in the devops trainer.in i am expecting the title it should be this one an actual title is nil which will be part of the testing process so here what i am going to do let me check the title first so go to the website this is the website and let it come and go to the browse source code and what is the title if you see that is the title right so the title is the same so that's the expected title and it's the same title actual title of course it will come same thing and this is the to opening the website get base url means opening the website this is for getting the title and here you are doing the conditioning if the actual title is equal to expected title you have to inform test passed if it is not test failed and close the driver simple did you understand that very small code easy to understand all of you yes oh yes so now what you're going to do you're going to convert into the compile code and then run it so let me open up a command i am having say this is the command uh, by the way this i am showing you manually so you understand better but these are all things you have to do through uh, maven also okay so that's the decision so here i'm going to convert into the binary code so for that see i'm compiling java class path is this like client library which i showed you and this is example dot java enter the moment you enter you should get a class file and let's wait for it i think file name okay it's okay done. done now see this is the binary file this was a java file now i'm going to run this file so how do we run it java command you know that if you have done little programming so here this is a command which will run the code just now which i got this so mind it this will open up your firefox browser i'm running the code now so that means it will open up a firefox browser open up a devops trainer.in match the title and should tell me whether it's a pass or fail now it says some problem and that is the problem with uh, uh, java problem so the problem is so the problem is yeah. is java version i know that how to fix it the version is problem that means in order uh, the selenium library which i'm using it i repeat selenium client library which i'm using it which is not supporting 17 java i guess let me check which java we have it so java hyphen hyphen version let me check that uh what yeah 
and get strong command. It's 1.8. So I think it's not supporting it. So let's do one thing. I have to close this. I have to go to the environment and set the Java. How come it's eight? Mm. Java hyphen version. Because I'm environment is set. Uh, okay. There's a mismatch in the version. If it's eight, I can see that. But here, I'm just checking what went wrong. Everything is good. Let me check the path here. Oh, I cannot modify. So what I'm going to do? So guys, I am going to open this one with Yes. Hmm. The problem is in the system, we have set this one and that is creating a trouble, you know. So what do we do? So you know what I am going to. Uh, I don't want to delete it for some reason. But I have to do that. You can copy paste and then delete it. Uh, I can delete it. But delete you know what? Some of my settings will spoil. And I'm thinking to override it. So here. OK, so maybe this is not working. I'm overriding in I'm trying to do that okay I don't know whether restart required or not then click now Java hype version still taking okay so for time being what I have to do I don't want to lose time so what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify that and then after the session probably I will you know revert back for time being because that is what I can do now. So this I'm storing it because of some of my settings are dependent on eight which I remember now I'm deleting it right now done done click ok 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 and if i go and open up a command line cmd java hyphen version and good to go so should be okay now i feel so let's check it out so here is command line and call out for this one enter enter and now you see it will open up a chrome you see in front of you is opening up chrome opening the website devos trainer.in trying to match the titles and all stuff like that and it will close this browser after the testing and here is your results uh, where do we see that so if you go a little up see test passed so that means the title which was expecting is matching with actual title and the test is passed now what i am going to do this time i'm going to fail the test cases so how do we do that so i'm modifying this it should be something like this and i'm going to compile the code 
for that I'm going to compile recompile because it's a binary code right so today on the screen compile the code one more time and run the code one more time and this time the test should fail because the expected uh, title and then actual title is different I made it different so this time the test should fail and you see browser everything is happening automatically I'm just showing you one test cases so you understand overall perspective and if you go here see test failed so guys did you understand what is the web driver so web driver is a executable which will call the browser and run the code on behalf of you using the selenium client understood all of you yes okay so this is how you have to do that again using maven you can run in the masses that you can do that now next component of selenium we have is grid okay if you remember we have a grid so what is grid uh, this is the one so sometimes you call it a server also okay so just um this is just for the introduction uh, level you don't have to set up a grid but you should know what is grid all about it and if someone is talking about that then you will help them what is a grid what is selenium server so the problem with this model understand that problem with this model is very simple see here if there is one code you run think about it one code you run and if it is taking one minute and which you're running with the one browser so let's say if you have 1000 test cases which is in real scenario then and each of these if it's taking one minute on average then how many minutes it will take for in running entire test suit 1000 minute very simple agree with me right all of you yeah. but the they will expect you to uh, deliver that in the 10 minutes window see that so real time which is consumed by the test cases in case of you have one server it's taking thousand minutes but they are expecting you to deliver in 10 minutes so what are you going to do so you'll say okay i need to run the test cases parallelly in at least of hundreds of servers so i will get the feedback in 10 minutes correct no okay so now the question is what is server so let me explain you the problem for that whatever we discuss the answer solution is server so what we are going to have it so this is you programmer let me change this here this is the programmer you write a code this code see earlier what we were doing if you remember that this code we were sending to the selenium client that was the things we were doing now not anymore you are going to send this code to selenium server yes okay and now servers will have already multiple node registered one two hundreds of node registered and each node there will be two component one is driver the one which i showed you the last one and browser okay driver will be here and browser and when it's a driver it can be any driver and browser like firefox chrome whatever it is and driver and browser so now what what will happen you have let's say hundreds of code it will send to selenium server and selenium server parallelly will assign one code to each of this worker and they'll give the test pass or fail and server is going to consolidate it and display and share with you so what has happened so server has basically 
created a parallel activities among the servers. Why? To reduce the testing time. Did you understand that now? What is a server? Yes. Yeah. So this is, we call it a server or grid. Okay. So there is one utility I want to show you though. You don't need to know because this will be done by QA team. But fundamentally you should know that. So here, this is the server grid. Earlier you used to call it a grid. Now I think they are calling server. And you have to set up. I mean, not you. I mean, someone has to set up from the QA team. But you'll have to understand this, this grid server. So you can, you know, do all this stuff. So this is the three component which we have in Selenium, which we use it. I mean, which uh, QA team uses it for doing the performance testing. So now the question is, they'll ask you, I mean, can you integrate automation testing as what patch of, as part of CICD? For that, you have to tell, okay, we can do that. Uh, tell us like, okay, how can we connect to the server and where is the server locations and all that stuff like that. Manually, you know the process, how it works in the web driver or server, which is you have to ask them and then integrate with, with the Maven and Jenkins and you kind of thing. Understood now how this automation testing is working, what the testing team is doing and how do they run the test cases and all. Have any issues with our channel membership? You can drop an email to us at contact at devopschool.com or you can also unsubscribe from channel membership anytime if you don't want to continue or did not like the video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries. We will reply to them at the earliest. Thanks for watching.